you know, our government uh, lied about the attack. They joined in, enjoined the Israelis, uh, but the attack was accidental. And um, um, the, even the excuse was so ridiculous uh, from a military analysis. But nevertheless, our politicians agreed with them. Uh, and um, um, they paid they paid reparations to those that were killed and and wounded, and they also uh, paid for the uh, paid uh, I forget how much, but uh, they a minimal amount of money to, for the ship, uh, nothing for what, that it was really worth. Uh, anyway, um, the long and short of it, though. The crew of the USS Liberty now, because we refused to go on with the lie, uh, they originally gave us a gag order that we were not allowed to talk about the attack, which lasted until 1979 when one, my division officer, James Evans, wrote a book called Assault on the Liberty. And that, I guess, was a, a flag for the crew to that, that since the book was out, and it was very informative and that that we could now talk about the attack. And we certainly did. And we start comparing notes to each other. And a wealth of information then uh, was discovered. But um, and we can talk about that later on. But um, uh, the message that I would like to impart to you is that um, we have suffered the crew has suffered for 50 years in the sense that because we refuse to lie about the attack and we tell them, we want to tell the truth about the attack, then we're labeled anti-Semitic and in all the bigotry of, of that occurs to, to, to go along with that. Um, and events have happened over the years and I have, tried to capture those events in a book that I have authored called Liberty and Justices, a survivor's account of uh, American bigotry. Um, and I'm firmly convinced that if American Americans knew the details of what we experienced, both for the attack and the aftermath and how we've been treated, by other, or by, by fellow Americans who, let's put, put it this way, are empowered and support Israel, um, that would make your hair stand, stand on end and be very upset. Um, we're, we're, we're loyal Americans. I love my country. I've been to over 45 countries in my lifetime and, uh, it, it doesn't get any better as far as I'm concerned and a humane form of government. Uh, but it's, it's under, it's, it's under attack internally. Uh, and it's, uh, there are external controls that are being placed on our government, uh, that Americans are not, are not really aware of. So any attempt, including yourself, to get that message out to the world and to America that that our founding fathers would turn over in their graves if they knew uh, the, the skullduggery that's taking place uh, to to our form of government um, and to the crew of the USS Liberty. Um, it uh, It's really shameful. It's very shameful. Uh, and I think when America finds out about it, they're going to be very, very upset. End of story. <laughs> well, I, I was going to say that there are several reasons why we think it's happened, that it happened. Uh, of course, without uh, some verification from our government or the Israeli government, well, I guess we might never know. Uh, but but uh, logic and and uh, uh, the events of the day, I think uh, uh, we can come to a pretty close, uh, pretty pretty close call on on. First of all, it was deliberate. It was absolutely deliberate. We know that for a fact. And um, uh, the Israelis knew what they were doing. Uh, we were under surveillance all morning long. Uh, I think our logs indicated 12 overflights that morning. I personally went topside to see one, one very low pass. Um, 
and uh, you could see the it was so low that you could see the pilot's face, and it was all friendly. As a matter of fact, one of the th- one of the things that the crew did when they were off off duty uh, was to sunbathe, and uh, so what the pilot saw that morning was right out of the pages of McHale's Navy of these guys all over the ship in in uh, beach chairs and towels uh, uh, sunbathing. Uh, we were not. We, we were we we knew that the Israelis had taken the Sinai, and uh, so, and that's that's where we were, and uh, that they had complete air superiority. Uh, so we did not feel threatened whatsoever. And, and in fact, with all these Israeli reconnaissance planes visiting us that morning, we felt our allies were our ally was keeping an eye on us um, and to be safe. Um, so no feelings of uh, 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 hostilities that were coming. Um, of course, at two o'clock that afternoon, all that changed. Um, it's it's it, it, the for the question you've asked. Uh, you know the why. Um, you have to you have to go back to um, I guess um, further to to get an understanding. Uh, we left the United States about May 1st to, to uh, um, our, our normal African cruise, which was sailing up, up and down the west coast of Africa. We were an intelligence ship, and our mission was to intercept anything in the ether. Um, and um, uh, at the same time, uh, Israeli... Uh, uh, ma- managers or, 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 or politicians, I, I don't know what the, how else they're phrasing, um, came to the United States and with their war plan in hand, and um, they briefed all the necessary people in, a, in our government, and given, they were given the green light to go ahead with, with the upcoming war. Um, we believe it was called Front Lick 615 was the name is the of the operation, uh, meaning that possibly the war was going to start on the 15th of June. Um, in any case, um, we uh, the ship was um, headed towards Africa and we stopped at Abidjan, Ivory Coast, for a Liberty Call. And at, at that at that time, we were given orders. Or, told to weigh anchor uh, and get to Rota, Spain as fast as possible. Um, and um, so this was all in, in May. Um, we arrived uh, in Rota, Spain, uh, late June. Um, I'm not sure exactly what day it was, but we were there for a few days uh, taking on uh, uh, Equipment and 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 also uh, personnel. We 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 took on three Marines uh, and three NSA civilians who were all linguists. And um, uh, of course, our orders were then to sail from Rota, Spain into the Mediterranean uh, to monitor the Arab the upcoming Arab is what really war. Uh, I said upcoming. So my point is wasn't June 5th yet, and, but uh, someone in our government knew that this war was going to start. Um, of course, we all know that on June 5th, the Israelis started the attack um, and uh, uh, immediately took out the air forces of Egypt, Syria, and, and Jordan, um, and um, were very successful in taking the Golan, excuse me, taking the Gaza, the West Bank, and um, the Sinai, all of the Sinai. Um, and so when we arrived June 8th, that was the, that was the situation. Um, for myself personally, as I was being briefed as to what was happening, I just couldn't imagine this little tiny country of Israel was being so successful in and just you know kicking butt all over the the Middle East, and I was glad that, that we were on their side. Um, so 
Um, but what didn't happen as of June 8th was they had, the Israelis had not taken the Golan Heights. And that was part of their war plan. Um, they were not going to quit until that was done. Um, I guess water is a, is a, is a, is a um, precious commodity over there. And, and they, they were going to control the water, I guess, coming out of uh, the Golan Heights and uh, for their farming and the rest of it. Um, in any case, um, so June 8th, um, the other thing that was happening in the background was that the Russians, uh, via the hotline, I should say the Soviets, because this was the Cold War days, the Soviets uh, and our and President Johnson were in conversation, um, and the Soviets were warning uh, him that um, if Israel did not come to the peace table quickly, and if they if they uh, Israel invaded um, any any further any further uh, invasion of Egypt uh, or Syria, because they were their client states. Um, they had paratroopers at the ready, and they were willing, and they were ready, willing, and able to get into this war. Which, uh, of course, Johnson did not want whatsoever. Um, well, Johnson at the same time was two faced in that um, you know he was he 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 was directly and indirectly supporting the Israelis and their, their um, uh, let's say, um, growth uh, demands at the time. And, um, and uh, uh, the Israelis looked towards the United States of keeping the Soviets out of their hair while they did what they had to do. Um, Johnson took the Soviets uh, to heart and I guess was pressuring Israel to come to the peace table on June 8th. And that wasn't happening. Um, because as I said, the Israelis were not going to give up until they, uh, or they, they took, were able to take the Golan Heights. Um, now, um, that's one, one, uh, one level of thinking that um, the Israelis, in other words, we were in, we were an impediment towards their their um, uh, military goals. Um, there was a Mossad agent who wrote a book. I, not first, I'm sorry that I, I don't remember the name of it at the moment, but um, in his book, he told he, he indicated that uh, that Maish Dayan, Dayan was worried that the intelligence that we were intercepting, that is the Israelis moving troops from the Sinai, out of the Sinai, over to the Syrian border uh, so that they could take the Golan Heights, that um, because we share our intelligence with the British, that the British would tell their their uh, Arab friends and w word would get back to Egypt of what was happening and that Egypt could then counterattack and take back the Sinai while they were busy uh, over in Syria. Um, that's, that's, you know, I, I, I'm not sure how, how accurate that is, but uh, that's a possibility. Um, the other, uh, the other thought was that, um, and I keep talking about Maish Diane because we have a classified, I should say a declassified cable uh, from the CIA that indicates that it was the Maish Diane that gave the order to attack the Liberty um, over and above objections from some of his military advisors. Um, so the other thought is that um, if the, the attack on the liberty could have been quick and and device that um, and, and and I should quickly and and, and, uh, and divisive. That's not the word, but anyway, um, um, that if the ship would have sunk, 
all hands lost. Um, the Israelis would have indicated that the Egyptians had done it and would have given LBJ then the, the right and the uh, American public support uh, to then get involved in this Middle East war um, over, you know, with uh, de depending on what the Soviets did, it didn't matter. Um, that would it, we we could then go to war with uh, with Egypt and, and Syria. Um, and last but not least, and I want to refer to this this new book that's coming out called "Remember the Liberty." Um, by Philip Nelson. Um, he's, he's one of three authors that I know of that are convinced from their, their uh, investigative reporting that Johnson um, may have asked the Israelis to take out the liberty. Now, you got to go back to the, the Vietnam War and the, the Tonkin Gulf Resolution, which we now know was was a farce. That um, it was a made up affair so that Johnson could go to Congress with uh, uh, demands for money and, and troops to, to go into Vietnam. So um, I guess Johnson had a uh, um, he had the the the, the not the foreknowledge of how to do this and so by by taking out the the uh, liberty um, asking the Israelis to take out the liberty with all hands lost uh, that would have been his uh, um, uh, his call to the American public uh, to want to once again get involved in this war from that angle then America would be the top military um uh, control, had top military control and would be the top dog, you might say, in, in handling the, the, the Middle East from that point on. Um, and um, that plus the fact that uh, Johnson was in trouble with the Jewish voters uh, from the major, major big cities in that they were um, upset with him over his Vietnam policy and was losing their support. And Johnson, um, and, and that's a, which is Johnson's uh, commitment or his, um, his uh, fanatical uh, de desire to continue to be president again for another term, um, wanted, needed their vote. And by swearing allegiance to Israel, uh, he would get it. Um, uh, and, and it, and of course worked, uh, well, to some degree, because he, he never did run for that next term. Um, he changed his mind, but in any case, um, uh, both Eisenhower and Kennedy had a balanced Middle East policy. And Johnson, Johnson changed that. Um, we were, they had a, a embargo against selling arms to Israel and uh, and and to, and to the Middle East. Period. And um, like I said, Johnson changed all that, and in no time, uh, we were selling billions of arms to Israel, uh, following uh, that direction, a change of direction. Um, unfortunately, for both Israel and Johnson. The ship did not sink. Um, one of the um, factors, or you know, looking at all the puzzle puzzle pieces, uh, is that possibility? Is that a possibility that um, Johnson may have asked the Israelis? That's the only explanation that completely satisfies making all the puzzle puzzle pieces fit for that day, because there were other things that happened. Um, that, that, as I said, that, that it makes sense. Um, uh, I, I think LBJ was a scandal. I think he, I, and from other books that I've read, uh, he had people murdered on his way up. Um, and I think, um, I think when Kennedy was assassinated, 
I think he had his hand. I think he had his hand in it. In other words, we had a coup d'état when when um, Kennedy was killed. And um, if you look at if you look at jo Johnson's background and his ability to control events in Texas, it was the place um, to have someone assassinated and that and get away with it. Um, so. Those are the, those are the three, three, um, concepts of why the Israelis attacked us. Um, and, um, um, it happened. <laughs> and it, and it was, uh, it, they killed 34 Americans, um, 31 sailors, two Marines, and one NSA civilian. And they, and 174 wounded. And some of those were maimed. You know, when you, when events happen and they talk about people that were wounded, well, you know, you, you think, well, that's, they'll, they'll get over their wounds. Well, and some people never get over their wounds and, uh, either lose limbs or, 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 or whatever for the rest of, and suffer for the rest of their lives. And that certainly has happened to some of my shipmates. Uh, and some did not last, but a few ma many years later um, passed on because of, of their of their wounds. Um, um, I hope that answers your question. <laughs>